Okay. All right, so we are joined by head coach David Shaw. Coach, you're going to open up with a statement. I think you're, you're, you're muted. So. You're good, you're good, coach. Hey, everyone. Um, good to see you all. Um, excited. We're finally on game week. Finished up training camp um, last week, and we're relatively healthy, especially in our two deep. Um, I've been kind of consistently saying that. That's a credit to our our, uh, our student athletes, our training staff, our sports performance, really making an emphasis on training and pushing. Um, our, our guys get ready for the season at the same time, keeping them healthy. So I'm excited. And we, we got a couple of younger guys uh, did get injured, but for the most part in our two deep right now, we're pretty healthy and excited to start the season. So open for questions. If you will raise your hand on the Zoom function. Thank you. Are uh, you're muted, Zach? I'm using your computer on your. Oh, you're using me. Oh, can you guys hear him through through mine? Oh gosh, I didn't know. Great. All right, Troy. Happy New Year, Coach. Good to see you. Mm. Uh, Bryson Tremaine. Wide receiver one at uh, one of the wide receiver spots. Uh, what did it take for him to, to get there? And what can we reasonably expect from him uh, uh, to, to see from him this season? Well, it just, it's been amazing. Um, both he and Michael Wilson uh, to have uh, injuries that, that really hampered them. Both these young men um, follow the direction of the doctors and trainers, and they push themselves really hard. And both these guys are faster than before they got injured. Um, so Bryson, uh, that explosion came back, speed came back, and then some. Um, he's been very, very diligent uh, to truly push himself to get back to where he was and is to come back uh, better. Um, so excited for him. Um, the teammates are excited for him, uh, for all that he went through. I mean, it was a really, really difficult, gruesome injury. Um, and he never wavered on whether or not he was going to come back better. And um, it's just great to see him every day go out there and run and catch and do all those things that he's able to do. All right, Dave. Yeah, hi, Coach. Um, just wondering what how how different is Tanner or how much improved is Tanner from? I think he made a reference that uh, during training camp about uh, at this point last year. Uh, he's at a different level. I was just wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, well, uh, physically, uh, he's bigger. Um, he's just under 230. Um, you know, bigger, stronger, um, more in tune, I think, with the offense as the offense has kind of um, morphed uh, towards his, his strengths um, and just in a better place. Uh, he is a leader. Um, he is the leader. Um, he's performed extremely well at a high level. He's been demanding of himself and of his teammates. So, I mean, a year later, um, then being in a quarterback battle, you know, trying to begin his college career to coming in as one of the conferences and nation's best quarterbacks and um, you know, got the command of the offense and the respect of his teammates being voted a captain. Um, just excited to see him uh, truly flourish this year. Ben? Yeah, I uh, noticed that you got Patrick Field slotted at Nickelback. Uh, just kind of curious what went into that decision to have him at that particular spot and, and what you think he's going to bring to to that spot for you guys this year. Well, you all know we've got one of the best defensive back coaches in America, Dwayne Aquina, and uh, he's he's got a lot of options right now. Um, an extremely veteran group, right? Some fourth and fifth year seniors in that group. Um, we've got a lot of flexibility with Jonathan McGill. John can play nickel. John can play safety. Patrick's come in, uh, and as Dwayne says, he's, he's a quick study. He's come in and learn those positions also. He knows both safety positions and the nickel position. So it's kind of how where we're going to begin, but we're going to roll some guys through, um, not just based on this opponent, but based on who we have. Um, you know, uh, Jimmy Wyrick has had a great camp as well. So you're going to see Jimmy out there uh, rotating through. Um, uh, you're going to see um, 
Muhammad, uh, Turner Muhammad uh, get out there as well uh, at corner. So I think we have multiple guys that we can play. And you know, if it's a long season and to keep guys fresh, we're going to roll some guys through. Um, but starting right now, we'll start Patrick at nickel and Jonathan at safety. But you'll see Jonathan at nickel most likely during the game as well and Patrick at safety during the game. Peter? You mentioned this offseason kind of stripping things down, going to back to basics and thinking about what your core fundamental values are as a program philosophically. What did you land on offensively as sort of the concepts and beliefs and things that you want to instill on a game by game basis? Uh, you know, it's going to sound like coach speak, but I think we've been dedicated to it. Um, first and foremost, uh, to run the ball with more efficiency. Um, and truly dedicate ourselves to that and you know, what schemes fit our line, what schemes fit our running backs and what techniques are we going to perfect to go play. Um, uh, and then to be efficient throwing the ball and explosive throwing the ball. Um, so really that just starting with those, those two directives for me and really building the structure around it. Um, Cause I think honestly, over time, you know, we had too much, we're doing too much, doing too many things. And um, I think focusing back on our principles and uh, cutting down what we do so we can be great at what we do, um, that was the driving factor, um, you know, of using whether it's drop back, play action, um, power schemes, RPOs, whatever, like those are, those are just the tools um, to truly service the mentality. Um, so focusing on the mentality and narrowing those tools down for us to be efficient and explosive and consistent, um, that's going to lead towards success. Um, that's been our history here. Um, and I, I think we, I can't say we, I say I um, allowed it to kind of get off base a little bit. Well, we did some things really well, but we just did too many things. Um, so really, and I think we were, we're more focused offense um, and we'll be on a week to week basis. Harold. Hi, Coach. You're one of uh, only a handful of teams in the FBS that didn't make any coaching changes this year uh, since the, from the last offseason. I was just considering kind of the team's record. I think that may, maybe it was a surprise to some people. Just what, what went into that decision to keep the staff cohesive? Um, it's going to sound sarcastic, but it's not. Um, common sense. Um, so I may have a different view of the word common sense than some others in this respect. Um, cause some would say common sense should say, if you have a bad year, then you need to change, change, shake up the coaching staff, which I've heard, I'd heard from many people. Um, but common sense to me is if you've got a great staff and you have a bad year, why change the staff just because the results didn't get what you wanted. Um, cause a lot of guys on my staff, they have Rose bowl rings. They have Pac-12 championship rings. A couple of them have national championship rings. Um, they're experts in what they do. And we work really well together. That should be the basis, not because we need to service um, disappointed fans um, that, that we need to show that, you know, as my dad calls them, firings of convenience. Well, it didn't go well, so I'm going to choose somebody to fire so everybody thinks that it makes it look like I'm doing something. Um, that to me is asinine. Um, what makes sense is that we have the proper coaches um, working the proper schemes with the right players. Um, and if we feel like we have the right coaches, um, then we keep them, um, you know, uh, so that's, that's what, it, that's what went into it. Um, I think some people wanted other things to happen, but I've never worried about what other people want. I've always tried to do what I think is right. Jackson. Is coach that a defensive tackle spot, one of the very few places where we haven't seen a lot of reps from those guys in games? Was curious if you could share uh, just what you've seen from that group and also wanted to ask about Jackson Moy specifically and maybe any other players that aren't listed on the two deep that might see some playing time. Yeah, um, that group um, is not going to have a lot of name recognition early on. As you said, they haven't played a lot of football. Um, but this training camp, seen a lot of effort, a lot of energy. Um, Coach Reynolds really worked with this group to develop this group. Um, they've all improved throughout training camp, which is a huge thing for me that, that, that in order for us to be ready to play, that's a vital position for us. 
Um, it's going to be interesting because I hate to completely judge a player until they play in games. Practice has been good. Competition has been good. Uh, we put a two deep together, but there's probably three deep um, at those two positions. Um, Jackson Moy is in that group as a young, explosive, athletic athlete. Has a lot to learn, but excited where he is, excited where Zach Rowell is, you know, a couple of incoming freshmen. Um, uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. We're going to roll a couple of guys through, see how they play. Um, we'll have a better evaluation tool after this game than we do right now. Um, because practice has gone well, but you know, there's a there's got to be a huge, um, huge uh, rise in play when the when the games are live. So um, we'll evaluate those guys, and we'll see how many guys we get a chance to put on the field, and see how they go, and hopefully we'll continue to improve every week. John. Coach, we've seen a little bit of, of EJ Smith. We've we've seen obviously Casey as well. Can you describe? Uh, the next one or two running backs for those of us that'll be seeing them largely for the first time, Arlen, Brendan, and others. Uh, yeah. Um, first of all, really excited where EJ is. Um, Casey, we were hoping he was going to be ready to go healthy enough, and he is ready to go and healthy. And both those guys look quick and explosive and physical, and i um, very excited about where they are. Uh, Brendan Barrow, you know, didn't get a chance to see him last year. Um, and uh, training camp's been good for him. He is quick and explosive, um, a big play, uh, potential running back, which you can see on his on his high school film. Um, oh gosh, uh, I don't know. They've all done well. We'll see how many we actually get a chance to play in the game. Um, but this is as comfortable as I've been with the entire room ready to do everything you know it's not oh this guy has to do that this guy has to do this so when we put a running back in the game he's going to be able to run inside run outside go out for passes and pass protect so i uh, feel good about about the entire group top to bottom and um you know excited to get those guys out there on the field back to troy Uh, freshman Ashton Daniels is a uh, QB three. What sort of role could he potentially have this season? Yeah, we'll see. Um, Coach Pritchard and I, it's been a year and, and we've always trusted our opinion on quarterbacks, especially um, we brought Ashton in and, and, you know, you're able to work guys out on your campus. Um, you know, the rule change the NCAA made uh, kind of for COVID reasons. And he came on, on, on campus and blew us away. We watched him play live and blew us away. And to the the fact that this kid had, you know, less than 50 offers, it just baffles us. Quick release, strong arm, great athlete. He's a really good lacrosse player. Um, he's come in training camp and really, really impressed us as well. So um, this is a big, strong arm, athletic young man that we think uh, has a has a high ceiling. So, um, you know, hopefully Tanner, you know, plays you know, pretty much every play, every game. Um, but, uh, you know, we may have an opportunity to use uh, one or more of the quarterbacks in different fashions if we choose to do that. You know, Ari Patu is also a very, very good athlete, quick, really strong arm. Um, so, you know, there may be time that we could use one of those other guys. But um, we're just excited to have a couple of young, strong arms in the program. And, um, you know, backing up our, our superstar quarterback. Ben? Just want to get your thoughts on David Bailey starting at the edge position. Um, it's, it's rare for a freshman to start um, right off the bat. Um, just talk about how excited you are to see what he's going to bring on Saturday and just him, your thoughts on him starting at that position. Yeah. Um, most coaches, and myself included, really really are slow to heap praise especially publicly on a freshman i have no problem with uh, heaping praise on david um he wants to learn um he wants to to grow um he is not he has he is he is humble enough to to look at his flaws and try to improve but this young man is long he is strong he is physical he's explosive um 
He's not one of those guys that we say, okay, we know he's got a lot of talent, but let's not start him right away. Let's work him in. He's not that way. We got to put him out there, let him play. He'll make some freshman mistakes, but he's going to make some plays that very, very few other people are capable of making. Daryl. Hi, you mentioned EJ already, but I just wanted to follow up on that. He's obviously going to take on a much bigger role this year. What What are your kind of expectations of him? Um, EJ's a complete back. You know, we, we recruited him as that. Um, he's a guy that does not have to leave the field for anything. Um, and uh, I think we'll, we'll see that. Um, believe he's going to have a, a breakout year. I think it helps to have the receiving core and tight end group that we have um, that maybe hopefully will draw some attention and allow him to have maybe some some uh, some nice looks to run the ball into. Um, but regardless, this guy can make people miss. He can break tackles. Um, he's got big play capability, big play speed, can catch the ball in the backfield. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm I'm really excited about, you know, the season start for him. As as the unquestioned uh, lead lead back we have, and um, I think it's going to be a heck of a year for him. And you know, not that we have to take him off for anything, but knowing it's a long season and we plan on him touching the ball quite a bit, we'll have a role for Casey Filkins. Um, Casey's another complete back who's quick and explosive, and both guys may also help in the return game as well. Um, so you know, it's a it's a it's a fun running running back room right now. Peter. I want to share a little bit of inside the fans and how intellectual football can get. You're obviously a Gruden disciple and his calls can get heavy on the verbiage. Could you give an example of what a Stanford play sounds like when it gets called in and how that stuff gets tagged? Um, well, there's a, there's a play call that we always use and partially because it's not in the offense anymore. So we don't mind saying it publicly. Um, but red left switch Z right sprint, right G U corner halfback flat. Right, that's an old West Coast Bill Walsh play, um, and more so than just the how long it is, but the rhythm that that it takes to call it, um, and and how you emphasize it so everybody hears the things that they need to hear. Um, but uh, we have cut down a lot of the verbiage, um, but at the same time, um, don't mind calling. You know, since we do huddle up, um, unlike a lot of teams in college football. Uh, we, we don't mind having, uh, some words in there that tell everybody what to do. Um, but that's a, that's a, a famous play call there. Kevin. Coach, uh, you, uh, you mentioned Ashton's uh, lacrosse background. And I, I'm just curious, considering kind of the success of dual sport athletes at Stanford, specifically through the, you know, football and baseball programs over the years, seen with football, basketball, football, and volleyball as well. How much of a plus do you see that when you're recruiting a guy, if he is a star in another sport as well? It's huge, huge for me. Um, that means that that young student athlete is competing, you know, most of the year. Um, the, the diversification of other sports, I think, helps their main sport. Um, so a quarterback – Right. There's only so many things a quarterback can do. A quarterback's not going to run a lot of routes. He's going to drop back. He's going to run forward. Um, but now the guy, the lacrosse player, who's used to now making moves and 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 putting the foot in the ground and planting and and spinning and twisting and you know getting jostled, um, you know those are just great things uh, that we love to see. Guys playing basketball, right? The multi-directional sports, basketball, soccer, like. Um, and Michael Rector was a great soccer player, right? The speed and athleticism and burst and the ability to adjust. Um, Ty Montgomery, basketball player, played a bunch of different sports. So we love the multi-sport guys because those other sports really do help them become a well-rounded football player. Right. Initial thoughts on Colgate. Uh, looks like a lot of their offense predicated on running the ball with a young quarterback. Uh, your initial thoughts on on the Raiders and some things they might try to throw at you. Yeah, a quarterback's a good athlete, strong runner, um, good passer. Uh, they've mixed it up quite a bit throughout the year last year. Um, we're always prepared um, that there's going to be some new wrinkles in there. They've been a, a fly sweep team. They've been a quarterback run team. They've been a, a play action pass team, quarterback movement team. 
Um, so they've presented a lot of different looks over the course of the season last year. Um, so for the most part, we, which we have to do every year, right? You just can't assume ever anymore what people are going to do just because, you know, there's no preseason and everybody's spring game, they pretty much very vanilla. Um, so uh, we're anticipating that there'll be some things we have to adjust to. But knowing first and foremost that the quarterback is a very good athlete, he's a big kid, he does not go down easy. Um, that's one thing that we have to really recognize right off the bat. Jackson. All three of your early enrollees are on the depth chart and your number two quarterback has two full off seasons. Um, at this stage, could you quantify how that opportunity has impacted your program? Immensely. Um, the early enrollee program has been huge for us, first and foremost, because it kept us in the game in recruiting. Um, you know, not everybody that we were recruiting obviously comes, but we bat for a high percentage. So a lot of our guys, they were going to be early enrollees. And if Stanford didn't have that program, then they wouldn't come. So we're talking about, as you said, three guys on our roster right now that wanted to be early enrollees uh, that were able to stay in the game on and eventually come here. So that's going to be a huge thing going forward as so many young people, so many really good football players and really good students are ahead of the pace to graduate. Um, so we have to have this program in place for them to come in and be successful. And these guys have come in and done extremely well academically, which is first and foremost, we, we want to make sure that they had the opportunity to do, to come in early and have success academically. And coming in in spring also gave them opportunity to get ahead football wise. And now, like you said, three guys that are true freshmen don't feel like freshmen. They don't feel like freshmen. They don't look like freshmen. Uh, and they're going to play for us. John. Coach, um, the, the, the pass catchers and, and, and wide receivers, I mean, you, I don't want to say embarrassment of riches, but you have a lot of talented guys with a lot of experience who can do a lot of things for you. Are you con concerned about getting enough touches and, and getting guys in rhythm? I mean, you have a little, little bit of experience with this in the early 90s when there was a, a similar era when there were a lot of good pass catchers, um, but that was a more pass, less, less balance. So how, how does that all sort itself out? How do you view that? I'm not worried about touches right now because these guys want to win. They want to win so bad. Um, so they know, hey, one guy may have a big game, which means maybe somebody doesn't. And then the next week it could completely flip. Um, but we have a lot of a lot of a lot of weapons. Um, got a quarterback that can deliver the ball. Um, so between, you know, multiple receivers and multiple tight ends that we think have an opportunity to influence the game. Um, the game's just going to dictate who gets the ball. Quarterback's going to make his decision, get the ball out of his hands. Um, some games it might be favored towards one, and other games it might be favored towards somebody else. But the bottom line is these grooves, these guys, they're the first to support each other and celebrate with each other. Um, and they know it's all about doing whatever it takes to win. So not worried about that at all. Just can't wait to get going and um, you know, use all these guys to help us try to find a way to win games. Ben. I'm guessing the play called Blue White Two Jet Flanker Jive might mean something to you. That's one name I remember from my days playing years ago. Um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on the tight end specifically and what you, you know, ex expect to see from that group on Saturday going forward. Because it seems like you got a lot of depth and option there as well. Yeah, it's a very very deep group. Um, we've got opportunities to use all of them. Um, ben Urosic, of course, um, has a chance to be a superstar. Um, we think he's got all the ability in the world, um, could be one of the best tight ends in America um, this year. Um, but the group is deep. Um, and uh, he came in with Lucas Unger, who's missed some time on and off. He'll be healthy for this game. Um, uh, but the, the the whole group, you see, you've got size, you've got length, you've got speed, you've got guys that are good at the line of scrimmage, guys that can run routes. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be fun mixing and matching this group. Um, one of the things that we're conscious of with our receivers and with our tight ends, trying not to run anybody into the ground, right? So none of these guys should play 60 plays in a game, 65 plays. We should be able to get them all rotated in and rotated out uh, stay, to stay fresh because it is a long physical season. Um, so we got to make sure that these guys stay healthy. But, um, you know, Bradley Archer has been great. He's been a guy that can be the blocking tight end, a pass receiver. We talked about Sam Roush. Um, 
you know, being in the two in the in the depth and and being ready to come play. So we got multiple options at tight end, multiple options at receiver, and we'll roll those guys through. We have time for two more, starting with Peter. What would define success for you this season, whether it's number wins, a bowl game, competitiveness? Like what are what are you looking for as the goal for 2022 Stanford football? Uh, my mentality right now is to win the next game we play. You know, that's all we want to do. We want to win the next game we play. Um, guys put a lot of effort in. We've got a great leadership group right now, uh, focused on the things that are important. Um, and this 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 team has a chance to be special. Um, but we can't get ahead of ourselves. We can't start thinking about the end of the season um, and the beginning of the season. Um, so for me right now, success for us is just winning the next game we play. All right, last one with Coach. We'll go to Dave. Yeah, Coach, just kind of a big picture question. Um, uh, just I'm not sure what's been going on across the country as far as hiring of black American, you know, black coaches. But, you know, obviously Notre Dame are you satisfied with the progress from last year to this year? Has there been any progress or, um, you know, has there been any kind of change that you would like to see? Yeah. Um, so I'm always an interesting one to ask those questions to, because I, I, I walk on both sides of the fence to where you, you, there should be great representation, but at the same time, you want to make sure that there are viable candidates. So, I'd hate to say that there needs to be a certain number um, because the candidates need to be good enough. If the candidates are good enough, great, then they should have an opportunity to get those jobs. If they're not good enough, then they should not get those jobs. Um, so I think the NCAA has done a, a really good job of different programs to prepare uh, coaches, uh, minority coaches for those positions. Um, I don't think that there should ever be a quota system. Um, I don't think there should ever be a mandate um, for anyone to hire anybody in particular because everyone should be able to hire the best person for their jobs. Um, I think it's our job as people in my position to make sure that we cultivate enough opportunity, uh, cultivate enough people for those opportunities when they come available. So um, I don't think we should ever be satisfied. I think we should always push to make sure that the hiring pro processes are open and fair and that the best people um, are able to be presented for these jobs. That's all the time we have for Coach. Uh, thank you. We'll be joined in a few moments by a couple players. Thanks, everyone. All right, we are joined by Senior Center, Drake Nugent. We will open it up right for questions. Ben. Drake, good to see you. I think I talked to you last week. Um, just uh, game week, how you feeling? Go. Um, good. I mean, good to see you again, obviously. But, uh, I mean, now the show begins, really. Um, definitely, I mean, it usually doesn't hit me until about Thursday or even maybe Friday. Um that we're actually in game week. Um, but you know, I'm excited, you know, um, now we're watching game tape and other people instead of our own and starting to set in a little bit, but you know, energy is a little bit higher, obviously, and we're excited. So Troy. Troy, you're on mute. Yeah, Drake, what's your view on what this offense can be? and the offensive line's role in making sure that it can be uh, everything that it can be. Yeah, um, so, like, I mean, everyone knows how much firepower we have um, really at every position, but, I mean, the offensive line's job is really just to make it or break it. Um, you know, we can – it all depends on how we play. If we can protect Tanner and make holes for EJ and Casey, and and if we protect Tanner, then he can deliver the ball down the field to all of our big receivers, as you guys know. So, um, I think we'd – it's really up to us and 
we, like I said before, we're either going to make it or break it. So, Jackson. Yeah, Drake, well, how you, would you just describe how different the line is today compared to a year ago? Um, I'd definitely say meaner, at least I think so. <laughs> um, you know, last year, we're ne- I don't know, it just like never felt like we were on, in a rhythm, you know. Um, part of playing line is getting your combos together, making sure your feet are right. Um, just like you kind of get in the rhythm, especially running the ball. Um, you can kind of tell the linebackers are going. I guess it just felt like last year, like every yard we gained was just, it was almost like too hard of yards again. Like we just had to really scrap for every yard we had and almost seemed like, and like this year just seems a little bit like, I don't want to say easier, but it just seems like more, more rhythmic and like um, more natural um, of how we're running the ball. So, yeah. Drake. Yeah, Drake, having a year of starting at a crucial position underneath your belt now. How are you feeling coming into this year, potentially, as opposed to how you might be have, might have been feeling coming into last year? Uh, yeah, so last year, I mean, <clears throat> to be honest with you, I was, like, super nervous, you know, coming after Dalma and whatnot. He set the bar pretty high. Um, but definitely after, like, even after the first game, like, I kind of realized, like, oh, I, can, I can do this, you know. Um, but, yeah, definitely this year, obviously, there's more of a leadership role that I've taken upon myself. Um, so like, I definitely have to lead from the front a little bit more than I did last year. And with that is just being more vocal and like setting the standard just for the guys in my group and on the team. But overall, I just say like a little bit more confidence and like expectation for like who we're playing, who the defense coordinators are, like what their blitzes they like to run, like stunts and stuff when they run them, just things like that. Um, a little bit easier to comprehend and prepare for than it was last year. Cause it was kind of blind dog in a meat house in some of those games not having experience so yeah i just kind of want to get your thoughts uh, since you're kind of a veteran in the group uh just any any guys in the in the room uh that you feel have made particular kind of strides over the course of somebody you feel like man that guy's really kind of stepped up from from spring to now and any guy or any guys plural that come to mind yeah, um, so I mean, obviously, all the starters, everyone's gotten better. Um, within the first five, probably Miles Hinton made a huge jump for us. Um, not just like technique wise and stuff, but just mentality wise, you know, pushing through himself, conditioning and stuff like that in the summer was huge. Um, for us to see, um, just gives us confidence in him and not, not just us and him, but in himself as well. Um, and then in the twos, probably like Metcalf and McLaughlin and Levi, um, those guys have done a great job. Um, getting better and better every year. Um, and I can probably say that with full confidence, they do well if they, they get in. So, John. Year two with Coach uh, Heffernan compared to year one. How would you describe it? Um, <clears throat> definitely more comfortable for sure. Um, I mean, he's always been an easy guy to talk to and approach, but I'd say having a year under the system with him, it's a little bit easier to bring questions to him and like compare them to issues we've had in the past or like, I don't know what we're facing in the future even. Um, but definitely, I'd just probably say more comfortable for sure. Um, and it's a little bit easier to understand like what he's saying and drills and like what he wants out of certain drills and like kind of like just overall coaching points, you know, it's a little bit easier to understand what he's trying to say now versus like when a guy first comes in, he can say different things. You kind of really don't understand exactly what he's trying to say. Um, but now that we've kind of had the ability to adapt, it's made it easier. So is that is that different for the offensive line? Do you think than other positions? Maybe you can't comment on that, but just your general knowledge of football. Um, maybe a little bit. Um, maybe the offensive line has a little bit more growing pains and um than other position groups. I mean, I can't really speak for other position groups, like you said, but definitely um, offensive line definitely takes a little bit of growing pains when you have a new coach just because, like, coaching points are different than meeting rooms. Like, when they ask questions, like, they want these certain answers. Like, you kind of – it takes a while to learn those answers and, like, what they're looking for within your each play you run, like, what other combos, like, your footsteps, like I said before. But, yeah, I'd say it's a little bit of growing pain, but I can't really speak for the position groups. Right. 
What sort of poses, what sort of challenges does the Colgate defense potentially pose for the front, for the, for, for the front line? Um, yeah, so their linebackers are pretty downhill. Um, so just making sure that we get our hands on them and just finish the whistle on it, honestly. Um, you know, EJ is a very dynamic playmaker. So in the run game, we got to just keep driving our feet because um, if we let if we let off the gas at all, then they'll probably make some tackles that could be 50 yard gains. But if we let off the gas, then they'll be five yard gains. So um, I definitely say that. And then as well as just they run they run a couple different stunts um, that we'll probably have to be ready for. Um, but at the same time, like their defense coordinator, <clears throat> they just got a new one from within. He used to be a linebackers coach, so I don't really know if their philosophy has changed. Like we get we. He, they, since they promoted from within, they should be keeping the same things going on. But, I mean, obviously that can change, but we'll be ready for anything. Dave. Yeah, Drake, um, I was just curious about, you know, there's talk about the, how you guys pared down the playbook a little bit or tried to simplify things. How does that affect you and your role? Um, you know, are there fewer formations, fewer packages, or, um, you know, how has it affected uh, you guys and what you guys have to uh, learn? Yeah, um, I mean, definitely for me, it's made it a little bit easier <clears throat> um, just based on a point system that we do. Um, like last year, I was like every play we go out there and like especially against teams like UCLA, Wazoo, people who disguise a lot and move a lot. It's definitely a little bit confusing. Um, and whatever I say, like the whole line's listening to. So it kind of puts a lot of pressure on you to like, if especially if you point, everyone's makes their calls off of your point and then they move or shift. And then it makes it really confusing for everybody and then you get blamed for it obviously but now these plays this year are pretty much self-explanatory where everyone on the line should know where the point is like where they're going whose guys they have no matter what they come up come up in so like i'd say more so the play calls and our rules simplified not necessarily the scheme and like what plays the amount of plays we're running so we have time for two more with drake uh anyone else has any questions <clears throat> Dave. Sorry, uh, I wanted to just ask your opinion on, on Walter. Uh, you know, he's um, how good is he? And, you know, what's uh, what's he going to bring to the team this year? Yeah, I mean, he's he's a beast, honestly. He's a, he's everything you look for in a left tackle. I mean, uh, blindside for sure. Like he he's been locked down in pass pro um, all camp. That's like the best thing about him, honestly, which is great for a left tackle, especially when you're protecting Tanner McKee. Um, but yeah, he's he's developed a lot. Um, I mean, obviously he has a lot of experience under his belt with coming in as a freshman <clears throat> and playing all all those eleven or twelve games it was, I think. Um, but yeah, definitely his one thing I understand about him this year is like his understanding for the game has definitely grown a lot more. Um, to where he's like looking at linebacker depth. It's just his feel for the game has definitely increased um, rather than years past, I'd, I'd say. So it's it's huge. But, yeah, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. All right, last one with Drake will be with Ben. Yeah, I just want to get your thoughts on another guy that's in the starting lineup for you guys. Uh, Horny Brook, just what's he going to bring? Um, how's he developed and progressed? He, he wasn't starting last year, I don't think. So just seems like he's a guy that's kind of getting better and better, and now he's starting. Just what are you seeing from him? Yeah, um, so Arnie's, Arnie's my roommate, actually, so some of this might be a little bit biased, but uh, I, I'd say that, you know, him and Bear were splitting time last year. Bear usually got the start, so, like, under under Bear's name, you'll see he got the starts, but they are splitting time all year, um, and it, it's just – it's still an ongoing battle between those two guys. Um, they're both good players, but Horns kind of took the leap in the springtime. Um and I don't really know exactly specifics where it made the jump. Um, but, I mean, they're both good guys, good players, and I can play next to either one of them. So whatever the coaches decide, I'm with it. So Great. That's all we have time for with Drake. All right, we are joined by fifth-year linebacker Ricky Miazon.
We'll open it up for questions. Ben. Same question I asked Drake. Game week, how you feeling? Go. Yeah, I'm uh I'm super excited. Um, and I think the biggest thing about this year is we really just want to rewrite the wrongs we made last year. And uh, you know, we've been it's been really cool to hear um from some of the past guys um who are in the NFL not NFL now just kind of talk about kind of their time at Stanford and um how their mentality was, um having guys who, you know, kind of mentored me like Bobby back. Um uh you know, a bunch of the the NFL guys came back. So it was really cool to hear their mentality. And I think we wanted to take some of the things they've kind of told us and implement them this year to to bring Stanford back to where it should be. John. The the new uh four three versus the the three four, how's that different for you? Yeah. Um I think the one of the coolest things is just having three really old I mean, you know, veteran linebackers out there at the same time. Um, and, you know, we kind of go through the week together. So we have specific alerts that we're looking for. And like we can kind of talk to each other throughout the game and remind each other certain things, whereas an outside linebacker being over there isn't in the same meetings as us. So they're not alert for the same things. Um, so it's it's been really good to just have three veteran guys who are all uh, you know, in the same meetings, looking at the same things, talking to each other. So we're on the same page. Um, and honestly, I think, you know, the inside linebacker group is a really good group. So having three of us out there is, is better than two, in my opinion. So I've been all for it. Troy. Yeah, Ricky, looks like uh, Colgate's offense is predicated on running the ball and using their quarterback uh, on the ground to be their biggest weapon. What sort of challenges and tests does that potentially pose to the front seven? Yeah, I think it'll be um, a really good test for us. Um, granted that we'll see a bunch of, you know, really um, athletic uh, quarterbacks throughout the year. So I think it's a perfect first game for us. Um, and, you know, off that, they also do a lot of like jet motion and movement. So um, just being really, you know, cued in on on where we need to fit and who needs to be a spy player. And, um, you know, so it'll be, a, I think it'll be a really good test for us. Um, you know, even, you know, last year we kind of struggled to to keep certain qu quarterbacks in the pocket. So it'll be a good test to see where we're at um, and what we do need to fix. Back to Ben. Just curious, are there, are there any goals you guys kind of have set for this game? Uh, that you've talked about whether it's, you know, getting a team shut out or holding them to under 100 yards rushing. Is, is, are there any goals that you guys kind of have set for this week one game against Colgate coming in like that, anything like that? Yeah, uh, we've kind of said it from the start. This is, uh, you know, this is like a culture game. This is a character game, you know, just because um, their Colgate doesn't mean our preparation changes. It doesn't mean our mentality changes towards the game. Um, and I think the biggest thing we want to focus on is is the work we need to do to get where we want to be and not more so the the outcome and the goals. Like if we do what we need to do throughout the week and we focus on what we need to focus on, the results are going to are going to, you know, come out as they are. Um, but the biggest thing for us is just making sure we don't prepare any differently for this game like we would USC. Um, so I think that's like the biggest thing going into this week is just making sure our preparation is where it needs to be. And we're pulling away from Colgate every day through film work, you know, through our workout on the field. Back to Troy. Sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. <laughs> Jackson. Yeah, you mentioned this, having a veteran group in your position unit. Um, even so, last year was the first time you were all really out there and healthy together. Uh, where do you feel like you've made the most strides after 12 games in a full off season going into this year? Yeah, I just think it's it's honestly um, one of the biggest things I think will be is confidence and just like being comfortable out there. Because I remember looking back on uh, Kansas State in in uh, Dallas Cowboys Stadium. It was like I had played before, but like never on that stage. Um, and you you almost feel like it's not real like it's just like what like what it like this, this it just honestly it doesn't feel real at first and then you kind of settle into the game and throughout the season you really 
settle in and your nerves calm and the game slows down. And I'm, um, I feel like that is going to happen much, much earlier for our group. Um, just because we've been through a whole season together. Um, and we've kind of, you know, we've, we've battled through, um, a lot of downs recently. And I think that's kind of made our, you know, that's, that's how you grow as a group is, is sticking together through those tough times. And, um, I really do think we have, you know, the the group to to get Stanford back to where it needs to be um, this year, as you saw with like, I think it was we were returning like 17 um, starters. So a really veteran group. And I think you're going to see us settle in much quicker than we did last year, um, just because we've been through through uh, a whole season together. John. Ricky. Uh, Integrating David Bailey and Patrick Fields uh, for Stanford is sort of rare to get a couple of guys on defense that are potentially real big impact guys for you. You're one of the leaders. Is uh, tell us what it's been like to sort of integrate them. Do, do you want them to talk more? Are they coach them up as yeah. to how Stanford does things? Tell us about the integration of those two young men. Yeah, I think uh, with Pat, it was a little different than David. Pat had you know obviously been in in, in college football for four years, started at Oklahoma, so. With Pat, it was really cool to see um, his mentality kind of integrated into our team. Um, and he's he's personality wise, he's not he's not like a timid guy, like he'll let you know. Um, and it's been honestly, it's been really good for our defense. Um, so I'm, I'm really interested to see, uh, you know, how he plays with all of us. But he's been looking really good so far. So I'm excited to see him out there. Um, but with David, it was a little different because he was, you know, he's a high schooler. You know, it's his first time in college football. Um, and I think from when he first arrived to now, he's matured so much in just a short period of time. Um, and I think that's, you know, partly due to us having a full uh, off season this past year. And, you know, off seasons are when you really create that culture for your team. Um, so we've, you know, we've kind of instilled this idea that, you know, we need to earn everything. Um and, you know, that can kind of get caught up when, you know, you have going to classes and you have tests, you have this, you have that. And you think, you know, you kind of deserve certain things because you think you're working hard. Um, and that's, you know, not the case at all. You have to earn it all. And um, just trying to instill that in him. Um, and he's, you know, definitely matured a lot. As you can see, you know, he's he's going to be starting week one. Um, but he's, you know, a burst of energy and he's just like, really aggressive, really physical, and um, I'm excited to see him play as well. Dave. Yeah, um, I was just wondering, Ricky, if, uh, you know, besides the scoreboard, what would be the biggest, to simplify what your main goal is, is it is it to stop the run this year? Is that, like, if we really had to boil it down, is that what it comes down to? Yeah, I mean, that was our, that was our biggest flaw last year. Um, you know, that's no, no secret. So I think, obviously, going into this year, like, that is one of our main goals is we need to stop the run. Um, so it definitely is um, a huge focal point for for week one and, and going forward. We have time for two more questions with Ricky, starting with Ben. Yeah, um, obviously one of the emphasis points of emphasis seems to have been for you guys this kind of fall is uh, red zone defense, um, you know, um, just talk about how you feel that 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 part is shaping up for you guys, and what have you guys kind of done to shore up that that kind of aspect of of uh, playing defense? Yeah, I mean, so I think the like obviously you need to be on your p's and q's in the red zone, but the I mean the biggest thing is you have to like shoot your shot. You have to be aggressive in the red zone. Um, and that's kind of been like specifically from a linebacker's perspective, like we want to be downhill, very aggressive, shoot our shots when we can in the red zone. Um, because, you know, the second you hesitate in the red zone is the second they score. Um, so we've just we've really been focusing on, you know, just getting downhill and making sure we know when we can take our shots to shoot the hole and uh, try and get that TFL and back them up a little more. So. That's been one of the, the the biggest focuses is just, you know, making sure we're not timid in the red zone, making sure we're staying aggressive and downhill and, uh, you know, trying to push them back and not let them, uh, you know, fall forward for, you know, an extra one or two yards or get into the end zone. All right. Our last question with Ricky will be from John. 
Ricky, you, you guys, particularly you older folks, are, are not oblivious to prognostications and number of wins and all that kind of kind of stuff. Some of us think that those are low by potentially a factor of two in, in some cases. How are you guys internally dealing with that? Have the coaches talked about that? Because there just there seems to be, I don't know if recency bias is the word, but th this year could be a lot different than last year. How do you guys talk about that internally? Yeah, I mean, for – for for especially with like uh in, within the the linebacker room like it could you know last year it definitely got you know there were definitely some low points um and the the i mean the biggest thing is we all we try not to really focus like you can't really become too like obsessed with the outcome because you kind of let go of you know the work you actually have to do um, and I kind of keep echoing that. And it's like, it's just how we kind of think about the game is like, if you really do focus on everything you need to do throughout the week and don't cheapen yourself, you, you're going to, you know, you, you're, you're not going to get the result you, you always want, but you know, you put everything into it that you needed to, you want, you don't want to be left with any regrets. Like, oh, I didn't run to the ball as fast as I could have this week, or I didn't watch enough film. So we're really focusing on every day pulling away from our opponent, like watching one more hour of film than them, running to the ball harder than them. And every day we're going to be pulling ahead one day at a time. Um, and then, you know, from there, the results kind of kind of fix themselves out. Um, but we really just we want to earn every day that we go into the week and then on come Saturday, earn our win. Awesome. That's all the time we have for Ricky. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We will see you at Stanford Stadium this weekend. Thank you, guys. Oh.